Ladies and gentlemen, I have been asked countless times, Dado, what are your favorite and least favorite raids? When are you gonna make a tier list of raids? I've done collabs with others, I've done segments, I've done videos, but I'm finally putting my own list together. I'm ranking these in terms of how much I enjoyed playing them outside of the day one experience. Trying to calculate a bunch of different things like how good the mechanics are or how good I think the raid is or anything like that led to a bunch of difficulties in terms of trying to rank these raids. This list is essentially my reaction to someone asking me if I want to run a raid. Loot is not a factor, exotics are not a factor. It is simply the act of running the raid. That's it. We have 13 raids to rank across four tiers. Vault of Glass D1, Crota's End, King's Fall, Wrath of the Machine, Leviathan, Eater of Worlds, Spire of Stars, Last Wish, Scourge of the Past, Crown of Sorrow, Garden of Salvation, Deepstone Crypt, and Vault of Glass 2. Despite the fact that VOG has been revamped twice, I'm just gonna go with the original version and now the D2 version. In the, I'll do it if you have a checkpoint tier, I've placed Leviathan, Eater of Worlds, Crown of Sorrow, Garden of Salvation, and the original Vault of Glass. Leviathan had some pretty unique encounters in the Dogs and the Gauntlet, but the Gauntlet encounter went on a bit long for my taste, and the Dog encounter had instances of weird pathing and AI behavior where things could get thrown out of whack, not to mention a lot of standing around sometimes, especially on Prestige mode. The Bats encounter was a very quick two minute encounter that just had you killing ads. It was basically free loot, but it wasn't very exciting to me. Callus was the real hero of the raid, having a very exciting and engaging boss encounter with a lot of moving parts. The underbelly was a really cool feature of the raid as well, when navigated correctly. When navigated incorrectly, it can involve a five to 10 minute wait trying to figure out where someone went, although this didn't really happen to me very often. This raid and most raids in this tier were fun after not running them for a little while to make them feel fresh again, but Leviathan is not a raid I'm in a particular hurry to run, even if it was pretty easy overall. Eater of Worlds is here because I thought the first half of the raid was just kind of boring. I wanted to get through it as fast as possible, and whenever we had to restart in the platforming section, I wanted to die. The final boss itself, Argos, phase two mainly, wasn't too shabby, I enjoyed it. However, as I talk about a lot of these raids, you'll find that I enjoy most final bosses, but getting to them is not as fun as the final boss ends up being. Argos definitely wasn't my favorite final boss out of all the raids that fit the criteria of fun final boss, but not super fun getting there. Crown of Sorrow is also going in this tier. The first encounter in this place was tough and pretty fun on contest mode because of the level differences. Once you were on level though, this encounter was not the most fun to do and I think is one of the least fun raid encounters in the franchise. I know you can make it go faster by killing everything immediately, but my groups were not tryharding this raid or this encounter. The platforming section had a lot of stop and go. It's not that bad, it just takes a little while. Fortunately, the pre-final boss encounter could go pretty quickly, getting to what ended up being another pretty fun final boss with a pretty boring DPS phase, thanks to what the DPS world was like back then, combined with Galran's complete lack of retaliation during this phase. I still really enjoy the encounter, but this is firmly in do you have slash I'll get a checkpoint tier for me. Garden of Salvation starts off fast, but then comes to a grinding halt once you reach the second encounter. On day one, again, it was fine, but for every run after the first 24 hours, this encounter needed something much more significant going on to keep it entertaining for me. The third encounter was slightly better, although playing babysitter with the boss wasn't the most exciting job. The atmosphere and the environment was fantastic in this place, but after a while, I'm not really running a raid for atmosphere. Man. Yet again, I thought the final boss was very engaging, although with a couple of points getting docked for some minor annoyances with the tether mechanic, and because of the boss occasionally turning to the side so much that it was almost impossible to deal proper damage. I'm also placing the original version of Vault of Glass here. While the saving grace of the original launch of the game, this raid did not age very well in my eyes, with a Templar experience that dragged on. 
and on and on, feeling like double the length of what we have today. The Gorgon Maze could be one minute or five minutes depending on how laid back the group was, not exactly the most fun place to wipe. And the Atheon encounter, again, at launch was great, but the revisions made to it in Destiny 2 breathed some much needed life into it. In my eyes, changing the teleports from the three farthest away players to random players was a good change to help promote teaching everyone all parts of the raid and not just letting people sit in a corner doing nothing. Without this change, I think this raid would have been much, much less exciting. In the, yeah, I'll run one if you need me, tier, we have Crota's End and Spire of Stars. I don't think Crota is necessarily a bad raid. It's just a really, really easy one. The Lamp Gauntlet was pretty fun for a while, but I was over it after a brief time. The Bridge Encounter had some flaws, including one of the only times where you just had to manually wipe if you had too many people die nor did I really consider this encounter very exciting. Death Singer's Fight is basically a complete afterthought in my mind, unless you were doing the challenge, which was a bit more fun, and Crota was just not very hard, as most veteran players may know. Even though Crota really helped my channel when it came to viewership and challenges and all that kind of stuff, those were done because the fight was so easy, and I initially needed a way to keep things interested, otherwise I just didn't want to do it. I think the reason I enjoyed Crota's End after dozens of runs was because it was so easy. I didn't really need to think at all, I could just run it with my buds and we can have a good time, or I could run it with a group of newer or inexperienced raiders and not really struggle too much. However, I didn't dislike running it as much as I disliked running other raids that had a good final boss, but a not so fun route getting to said final boss. A lot of people want this to return as a dungeon, and you know, I get it, ha ha, Crota's End, super easy. But I would personally like to see Bungie whip this raid into shape and have it kick our ass more than I would like to see it turn into a dungeon. Spire of Stars would likely fit into the checkpoint tier, but I really enjoy the final boss due to its hectic nature, having to juggle multiple moving parts all at once. Wipes were pretty devastating though, and it was a very difficult raid to teach, but so satisfying to beat. While I love the scale of the platforming section, man, it could take a while to do. I'm really learning that I just don't like very long platforming sections in raids after day one. It just slows things down so much. Shorter is better in my eyes, apparently. The first encounter was also entertaining enough that I didn't mind it. There was good enemy density, which meant a lot of killing in between the main mechanic actually happening. Next up, we have the, yeah, I'll run a couple, tier with Scourge of the Past, Deepstone Crypt, Vault of Glass 2, and King's Fall. Scourge of the Past is a pretty easy clear of a raid. It's one that's easy enough where you can just have fun with the buds, but just hard enough that you do need to pay attention if you want to get it done in a reasonable amount of time. The Sparrow section was amazing the first time through, and I preferred it much more compared to lengthy platforming sections, although you do still have a small platforming section after the fact. However, if you have a group that's very weak when it comes to Sparrows, this was much more of a pain. Insurrection Prime was a pretty fun encounter in my eyes, not really the most stressful, plenty of room for trolling around with the buds, which my group was very fond of. It's nice when you can mess around during a fight, but the moment I gotta break out the, okay, how many res tokens do we have? People can flip a switch and execute before we have to start the whole thing over. I couldn't decide on the spot for Deepstone Crypt. Placing it somewhere in between, I'll run one if you need me, and yeah, I'll run a couple because it just kind of depends on how I'm feeling that day. It's very easy, which makes running it not that much of a pain, but because it's so easy, I don't ever feel like running it or wanting to run it. But it does make for a great raid in terms of just being able to chill with my friends because we don't really need to focus up too much and ultimately that is a rather big draw of a raid experience for me lately. Just being with my friends, especially nowadays when we are barely raiding and people are playing other things. I don't really have any issues with the encounters to a significant degree. Everything can be one cycled pretty reliably, but it doesn't ever feel like it drags, maybe minus the third encounter. But there's enough going on in that encounter that I don't really mind. It also has a platforming section, but I also don't mind this one too much because it's not too long and you don't need to wait for anyone else so that you can progress, minus having to wait for everyone to get to the end but you know, you can just do something entirely different while waiting around. 
Vault of Glass 2, as mentioned earlier, I think really gave a good shot of adrenaline to this raid, making it go a lot faster, but also really bringing it up to date with Destiny 2 standards while keeping the experience mostly true to the original. It's not the most exciting raid, and Gorgons can still be annoying if people are messing around too much, but it's a fun raid to run without a huge amount of downtime, I guess besides the very beginning of the Templar encounter. King's Fall. King's Fall to me feels like it varies wildly depending on what I'm in the mood for. Sometimes I want to run it multiple times, and sometimes I don't even want to look at it. The swing in difficulty compared to the previous raid, Crota's End, was massive. Opening the door was pretty fun. It could run a bit long. Being able to slam yourself into the ceiling was a fun party trick to show people who were unfamiliar. Then, of course, we have the platforming section, which could be a pretty massive holdup sometimes. I just didn't like how long it ended up being after, like, the 20th run. Next, we come to probably the weakest part of the raid to me, which is the Totem Encounter before Warpriest. The reason it's the weakest for me is just because it goes on for so long. At least Bungie increased the tension during the encounter by releasing more difficult and higher health enemies to make things a bit more interesting, but this was still such a long encounter. The War Priest is fine. It's fine. One cycles for my team happened somewhat often, so the fight never really felt like it dragged on for too long. But there wasn't a ton going on during the actual fight. War Priest would shoot you a bunch, but otherwise it was Thralls and Acolytes with a couple of Wizards. Didn't mind too much, because if you played well, you could crush this fight in a couple of minutes, and even if you didn't, finishing the fight was all but guaranteed on the second phase. Then we get to Golgoroth. One of my favorite encounters of all time, possibly my favorite of all time, especially on hard mode. This is the first fight that truly felt like an MMO-style encounter in my eyes, and it still does today. I think this holds up incredibly well. The taunts back and forth, the super high damage numbers, watching out for Cursed Thrall, the rotations, people watching out for explosive light on hard mode. You needed a lot of coordination and teamwork and callouts to get this done in an expert fashion, and it is still one of the most satisfying boss fights in the franchise to complete. Not much feels better than perfectly executing that boss fight. The platforming section was very entertaining the first times through, and thankfully some shortcuts were found involving sword hopping, but this was another platformer that I didn't mind too much because it was pretty easy and didn't really take too long. If you had someone who was weak at jumping though, you were in for a long wait. The sisters encounter is fine. It's over and done with in two minutes. It's not really that tough. Just kind of sets up Oryx. For Oryx, I enjoyed that you needed brilliant execution of this fight in order to succeed every time, especially during a time that felt like the game had been really easy. I enjoyed the feeling of clutching up on hard mode if you had one or even two people go down, as anything more than two people dying was a wipe 99% of the time. Even one person dying would throw things into disarray. It was a satisfying encounter to complete because of all the moving parts. But, because it was so rigorous, Oryx and the entire raid really, it meant that less than perfection meant that you would be there a while, and sometimes... I just was not in the mood for super intense, serious gameplay. Not to mention that the Oryx encounter falls into the trap of not being able to be sped up in any way, which is typically something I have an issue with. Sometimes you just want to chill with the buds, and King's Fall is definitely not a chill with the buds kind of raid. I would much rather run Wrath of the Machine if I was going to chill out, at least at the time. I don't know why I went so detailed on this one. Probably because this is one of the few raids that has more than two actual boss encounters and is one that I either really want to run or I really do not want to run, depending on my mood. Finally, we have the Red Knight tier with Wrath of the Machine and Last Wish. Wrath of the Machine was my favorite raid for a long time, although as we discussed in my Day 1 Raids video, one of my least favorite day one experiences for a reason that doesn't really have much to do with the raid itself. It was my favorite raid for a long time because, well, you know, we only had four raids in D1 and I thought it was the most enjoyable overall, on average, compared to all the others. 
Vosik wasn't a stellar encounter, but it wasn't offensively bad or anything like that, and the white mechanic made for some funny moments of people not making it to the door and you're emoting at them. It's fun. The Death Zamboni was a pretty fun encounter as well, given the setting. Although I will say that I feel like because it ended up being a pretty easy encounter, people wouldn't take it very seriously, and thus we would wipe a lot here, which could get frustrating at times. Axis Part 1 was not a thrilling encounter at all, with the Shank part going on for way too long, in my opinion, but Axis Part 2 has to be one of my favorite encounters of all time. Everyone has a job. Everyone needs to know what's happening, especially for the challenge mode, which is one of very few challenge modes that actually required you to interact with a mechanic that you didn't need to in the normal version, actually living up to the name of challenge mode. The damage phase was really fun, the part leading up to the damage phase was really fun, even if Axis spent a little too much time throwing bees at you, and everyone knew that the fight required a good amount of concentration, which meant everyone is on their A-game. Finally, probably unsurprisingly, Last Wish. Last Wish is my favorite raid in the franchise. The setting, the environments, the encounters. I love it all. I love that there's tons of actual bosses and not just encounters. It's not too tough, so you can enjoy it with the buds. It's one of the longest raids, and sometimes I'm in the mood for that. You can make most of the encounters go pretty quickly, like Kali, Morgoth, Riven, and for the ones that you can't, they're not so slow that it's a mood killer, except maybe for the vault which can definitely run a smidge long. Riven is a pretty fun encounter, despite how easily abused it is nowadays, but I always do it legit. And just when you thought it was over, there's another encounter right after where you can really have some fun, you know, launching people into walls and having a good laugh. I, ju I just don't really have that many bad things to say about Last Wish. It is my favorite raid. What's your favorite raid, comments? And why? I know you're dying to tell me. I know you're dying to tell me why your favorite raid is the best raid. Just tell me and tell others. Spread the word. Spread the gospel of raiding. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.